Hi, I'm Jason Duro. I'm an independently published fantasy author, and today I'm going to be talking about a problem at Amazon that has been affecting authors over the past few weeks, especially independently published authors. This is something that is affecting anyone who is published through Kindle Select and has their books appearing in Kindle Unlimited, so it is affecting traditionally published authors as well, but I'm an independently published author, so that's the perspective that I'm going to be talking from. And I'll start out by giving some background and perspective on on what is happening and why it's happening, and then I'll talk a little bit about what you might be able to do if this affects your account on Amazon, and then finally, what we can do overall as a community to try to rectify this situation overall. So if you're an author of any sort, independently published or traditionally published, chances are the vast majority of your book sales come through Amazon. That's the dominant bookseller in the world. That's where most books are sold, and so it's a huge portion of the book selling market. And it's one of those companies that you deal with, whether you want to or not, if you want for your career as an author to grow. And so I'm with Amazon. Just about everybody that I know who's an author is with Amazon. And chances are, if you're an independently published author, you probably also work with KDP, which is Amazon's publishing division. Now, as part of Amazon's publishing division, they offer a program called Kindle Select that you can opt into. And when you opt into it, you are committed to it for a period of 90 days, and then it renews automatically if you don't opt out of it before the 90 days are finished. And it has a number of benefits to it and a number of requirements as well. When you're in Kindle Select and you sell an ebook through Amazon, you can put your book into Kindle Unlimited, which is like Amazon's version of Netflix for books. It's a huge selection of books. Many, many of them are independently published, and it's a great selection. I have tons of friends who are great authors who have books in there. There also are a lot of traditionally published authors in there. I know Dean Kuntz is in there, and a whole lot of people. So it's a great program for getting a lot of books and a lot of reading material for a monthly subscription or if you buy it several months at a time. So you can get into that with Kindle Select. Now, the main requirement in order to be in Kindle Select is that your ebook, any ebook that you enroll in Kindle Select, has to be exclusive to Amazon. You can't sell it anywhere else. It has to only be sold through Amazon. So that's the main requirement that is happening there. And for the most part, that's fine. For the most part, most people are happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm fine with having my ebooks exclusive through Amazon. I have my print books sold wide. I have them in Barnes & Noble. I have them in independent bookstores and everywhere else. So Kindle Select doesn't affect that. It's just the ebooks that have to be exclusive to Amazon. An issue has come up that people have been aware of for a while, and I'm aware of it myself. It's happened to me. But there is something going on where book pirates are able to access ebooks, especially ones that go into Kindle Select that are in Kindle Unlimited, that they somehow are scraping them off of Amazon's site, they are getting hold of these ebooks, and then they are putting them on pirate book websites. The biggest one, which was shut down last year, was called Z Library. There are some others out there. I'm not going to obviously point you to them, but Z Library was the biggest one that got shut down. And the pirates are getting these books and putting them on the website websites where just anybody can download them for free. And obviously this is without the author's consent. It is presumably without Amazon's consent, even though Amazon seems to have some sort of vulnerability that is allowing this to happen. And in my case, I know that my book, this did happen with Akathar's Greatest Trick. The day that I uploaded my files and got all my ebook files and everything put to Amazon server before it was available wide, before it was open for sale, my book was already pirated on one of these pirate websites. That site's down now and it was taken care of, but uh, I know that this is happening somehow and it's not just from when the books go live. It's something that's happening when the files are being transferred. I, I don't know technically how it's happening, but there is some leak that's happening because I didn't put my book anywhere else other than on Amazon and it ended up pirated. So this is something that's been happening to just about everybody who has an ebook on Amazon. If you have an ebook there, it's pretty much going to be pirated. And what has been happening recently is Amazon has been contacting authors and saying that the authors are in breach of their Kindle Select contract because they have been making their ebooks available widely on the internet and not just exclusively through Amazon. 
And what's actually happening is they are having their books pirated against their will and put onto these pirate websites. Then Amazon is going and seeing their books on these pirate websites and saying, hey, your book is available here, so it's not exclusive to Amazon, so we're going to remove your book from Amazon, and in some cases, we're going to shut down your author account and effectively end your author career over this. So obviously this is not an optimal situation. This is something that has been causing a lot of trouble and a lot of stress to many authors that I know right now and many in the larger author community. It seems like so far it has primarily been affecting romance authors who are enrolled in Kindle Unlimited. I have not heard of anyone outside of romance having their accounts shut down or their books taken down yet, but this certainly is something that could affect any genre. I suspect I've just been hearing about romance because romance is the biggest genre in publishing. So it's something that's very bad because it's obviously bad to an author when their book is stolen and they are not getting revenues from it, their book is pirated. But then in addition to that, Amazon is effectively letting these books get stolen from Amazon's site, put up onto these pirate websites, and then they are punishing the authors for this. So it's kind of a crisis. A lot of people that I know are really upset about this and are trying to take their books out of Kindle Unlimited now. They're trying to figure out what to do, and it's kind of sent the independent publishing community into a tailspin for the past week or so. Now, here's what I think is happening. Amazon has this contract with authors, and authors are obligated, if they're in Kindle Select, to have their ebooks exclusive through Amazon. So Amazon does have an obligation to monitor and make sure that we are not selling ebooks elsewhere, that, for example, that I don't put my books on Kobo or that I don't have them on somewhere else that is not Amazon. They do have an obligation to monitor that and to make sure that that's not happening. I totally understand that. And I believe in the past they had Amazon employees following up and just checking and doing due diligence in some way. They probably had programs they were monitoring and doing things like that. I believe, and this is just my speculation, I suspect that more recently they have shifted those duties to AIs and to bots to handle. I don't know if it's because of downsizing at Amazon. I don't know what the situation might be there, but my suspicion is that they've taken that duty from humans and given it to bots because I can't imagine any rational human looking at a pirate website and saying, oh yeah, this author put their book there and is in violation. I think the bots are faulty and I think the bots are seeing it and then are reporting back and Amazon doesn't have a good human check and balance system to make sure that what the bots are doing is appropriate. And I think the bots are just automatically issuing these notices and shutting down accounts and doing all this kind of thing. So I think that's where the problem lies. Again, this is just my speculation on what's causing this and why it's suddenly happening. So I think the bots are to blame, and I think if there were human oversight, I think this wouldn't be happening as much. But this is happening, and there are a number of authors who are in the situation where they have gotten notices that their books are taken down, that their accounts shut down, and they're trying to figure out what to do to salvage their author career. And in most instances that I've heard of from people that I know who have gone through this, it's not a huge number of people, but there have been a few people that I know who have had this happen recently or even a while back. And in most of those situations, they were able to get in touch with a human at Amazon support and talk to them, explain the situation, provide proof that they own this book and that the book was put onto a pirate website and that this was just all just a mess. And they've gotten back their accounts. They've gotten their books put back on Amazon and everything ended up back where it started again. And in those instances, the things that the people that I know have done to prove to Amazon that it's their book and that this other pirate website isn't the real owner of the book and whatever nonsense they need to prove, they've been able to prove it in a number of ways. One thing that they've done is people who have bought their ISBN number or been issued an ISBN number outside of the free ones that Amazon issues. For example, if you buy your ISBN through Bowker, you can take a screenshot of the screen that shows that you own this ISBN on Bowker and it's associated with this book in question and send that to Amazon. In some cases, that's been sufficient for proving the case and getting everything handled. In other cases, authors that I know have provided Amazon with a copy of the first draft of their novel. They've provided them with a Library of Congress registration, with copyright information, with all kinds of stuff. There are lots of different things that you can provide to Amazon to prove that this is your book and that you are not authorizing this book to be on the pirate website. And uh, there are lots of things that you can prove and you can provide to Amazon that will satisfy them, that will get them to put the book back on the site and to handle it. 
Now, it's good that Amazon is working with authors to restore their books and to restore their accounts, but that doesn't compensate the authors for the lost time, the lost revenue during the time when their books are taken down, and the worry and stress that happens when all this is going on, because it is a hugely stressful thing. If you lose your Amazon account as an independent author and you can't get it back, you're pretty much done. You can't have your previous books that were published there. Your reviews are all gone. Your sales record at Amazon is gone. If you were a best-selling author, that's just, that means nothing at this point. And I don't really know what you would do at that point. Would you create a pen name and start selling under that? Would you have to republish your books? I don't know. So it's a serious thing. It's very stressful. And even if it is able to be dealt with and fixed fairly easily, it's not something that should be happening in the first place. So given that, how do we address this and make sure that it doesn't happen going forward in the future? There are three parties that I've seen a lot of people pointing fingers at as being to blame for this happening. The first party is the readers who are downloading the pirated books and reading them. A lot of people are upset with them saying they're to blame for this. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's the case. Of course, as a professional author, I want for my books to be purchased legally. I want for people to read them the way that I want for them to read them. I want to be able to get revenue for it so that I can pay my bills and continue writing and build my career. But I know there are some people who are not going to play along with those rules. They're going to download the books however they can and get them for free. I wish they wouldn't do that, but it's the reality of the world. I don't think those people are the ones who are causing this situation. And in general, I have a hard time thinking of someone as the enemy if their crime is that they want to read my book. I don't like that pirates go about getting the books the way they do, but I'm not going to say that they're to blame for this situation, and I don't think it is effective at all to go after those people in this situation. The second group is the people who are the pirates that are going to Amazon and somehow acquiring these ebooks and then putting them onto the pirate websites, onto Z Library and whatever came after that. Those people for sure are in the wrong. Those people are criminals and they have been prosecuted as such in the past. And there is an argument to be made that if they didn't do this, then we wouldn't be facing this situation. I absolutely think they are to blame for this, but I don't think there is a really easy or effective or practical way to go about addressing that because taking down those websites is kind of like playing whack-a-mole. When you get rid of one, when you take down a pirated copy of a book, another one pops up a week later, and they have so much redundancy built into this thing that it's really hard to practically do anything effective to get rid of this as an overall thing, to get rid of the whole pirated book website thing. You can knock down a site like Z Library, but then other ones come up in its place and they pose just the same threat that Z Library did to authors. So it would be great if we could get rid of that, but I don't know an effective way to do it. You can send them DMCA notices, you can send them all kinds of stuff, you can get individual sites taken down or individual books taken off them, but it's an epidemic kind of thing that that's not going to take care of the overall landscape of piracy. So I don't really think going after them is an effective thing for this specific situation. The third party that's involved with this, though, is Amazon. And that is where the change needs to happen in order for this current problem to be rectified. It's Amazon's policy that is causing these issues. And as I said before, I suspect it's just because Amazon is using bots to monitor for this kind of thing and to take down accounts. And I suspect that if Amazon put some human oversight back into this process and handled this differently and sent maybe an inquiry notice to authors or asked authors before taking things down, I think that would be a lot more effective. So the way that I think this should be handled is for Amazon to change their policy. Now, there is precedent for Amazon changing a policy because of trouble that it's causing with authors and with the community. Last year, there was a lot of controversy about Amazon's ebook refund policy in that they were allowing people to purchase and download and read ebooks, and then after reading the ebook, get a refund for it and return the ebook to Amazon. And authors didn't like that. Authors were protesting that, and readers stepped up on behalf of authors and protested it as well. It went through a lot of process, and finally, Amazon announced that they were going to be changing their policy on ebook refunds, which is a great thing. It's a great development. It's proof that Amazon does listen and is willing to change their policies. At that time, 
The reason that Amazon made the change was because some professional organizations went to Amazon and made the case for authors that this was not a good thing, that it was better for the industry for that policy to change. And specifically, the organizations that were named at that time that were effective in this were the Authors Guild within the United States and the Society of Authors within the UK. There are a lot of other organizations in Australia and Canada and throughout Europe and lots of other places that have organizations like this. So those were just the specific two that were named at that time as being instrumental in pushing this through. I'm a member of the IBPA, the Independent Book Publishers Association. There's also Ally. There are all sorts of other organizations that are similar. That All of these organizations are set up in order to help authors, and some of them specifically to help indie authors. I believe if these organizations go back to Amazon and make the case for us that what they're doing is not good, they need to put human oversight onto these situations around book piracy, that that is what needs to happen, that that's going to be the most effective way that we can deal with this. So I would encourage everybody to write to these organizations, write to the Authors Guild, to the Society of Authors, to IBPA, to Ally, to whatever organizations you might be a part of or you might know about that advocates on behalf of authors and specifically on behalf of indie authors. Ask them to talk to Amazon, ask them to talk to the KDP people, and ask them to convince Amazon to change their policy. That is the single most effective thing that I believe any of us can do to make this situation better. Now, in the meantime, while we're waiting for the wheels to turn and for this thing to get taken care of, which I do believe it's going to get taken care of, I believe Amazon wants to do what's best for business, and I believe what's best for business is not to eliminate their profitable authors, so I believe it will get taken care of. But in the meantime, what should we do as authors to make sure that we're not going to get hit by this? Because it is still a current threat if you're in Kindle Unlimited and have the exclusivity deal with Amazon, and you get your book pirated, which you have no control over, Amazon could go and say, hey, your book is widely available. We are just ending your account. So what can we do? A lot of people that I know are taking their books out of Kindle Unlimited for now and then are planning to put them back in when this gets resolved, which, again, I believe it will get resolved. And so they are sort of taking themselves out of that ecosystem. And that is one thing you can do. That's really the only thing that I know of right now that you could do other than painstakingly try to hunt down and send DMCA notices for every copy of your book that you see pirated anywhere, which I believe that is sort of impractical. I think that that would take just all the time that you have. You wouldn't have time to write and edit and promote at that point if you try to do that. So you could take your book out of Kindle Unlimited. There are a few reasons that I don't think that is necessarily the best path for everyone, and in some cases it's not possible for everyone. As far as it not being the best path, the authors who have been most affected by this situation are romance authors so far. And as I said, I believe that's because romance is just the biggest genre. It has the most readers, it has the most books out there, it has the most authors working, and also Readers who are really into romance, a lot of them are very dedicated to Kindle Unlimited. They will read everything they can find that's on Kindle Unlimited. Some of them read a book or two a day, and they just go through that archive, and they are great for romance authors. They fund them, and they, they are a fantastic established reader base. But they don't, a lot of them don't necessarily buy books outside of Kindle Unlimited because they're satisfied with what they find there. And I know a lot of romance authors whose main income source is Kindle Unlimited. A huge portion, a huge percentage of the money they make comes from Kindle Unlimited. So if they remove their books from there, they're cutting out a big portion of their revenue right there. And that's impractical for a lot of authors that I know that are doing that. As a fantasy author, a smaller portion of my revenue comes from Kindle Unlimited. I believe I'm around 20% of my revenue is Kindle Unlimited, so taking myself out of it wouldn't affect me nearly as much as my romance author friends would, but it's still not great to think about losing out on that revenue. And then on top of all that, there are a couple of factors that will cause people to not even be able to take their books out of Kindle Select. 
The first is that when you sign up for Kindle Select, you're in the program for a three-month period. You agree to be in it for 90 days. You can opt out of it, but you have to wait until that 90-day period ends before your book's actually taken out of it. So even if today you go and say, hey, I want to be out of Kindle Select, I don't want to participate in this anymore, you have to wait for your current contract to run out. And that may be the majority of a 90-day period before that can go into effect. So even if you pull your book out, you'll be sitting there for this period while you're still in there and still subject to possibly being hit with this problem that's going on. And the other thing that is a problem that a lot of people have not really considered is I, I've heard from a lot of people who want to take their books out of Kindle Select and then they want to publish wide at that point to try to make up that revenue. They want to publish through Nook and Kobo and all these other places. But there's an issue with ISBN numbers. When you publish as an indie author, if you go to Amazon, for example, you can bring your own ISBN with you there, or Amazon offers to give you what's effectively an in-house ISBN number. It's connected into Amazon's system, and you don't have to pay extra for that. Whereas if you're within the United States, you have to buy your ISBN elsewhere from somewhere like Balker, and the ISBNs are fairly expensive. You can save money if you buy them in bundles of more numbers at a time, but if you buy just an individual one, it's, it's fairly expensive. So a lot of authors, especially ones who write a lot of books, and have a lot of books coming out frequently, which is what a lot of romance authors who are in Kindle Unlimited do, they will go with the free option where Amazon assigns them a number and they don't have to pay for a separate ISBN and bring that in. So everything works fine as long as they're staying exclusive to Amazon and publishing through there. But if they suddenly decide that they want to leave Amazon, or if they want to leave Kindle Select and start selling wide, if they want to start selling at Barnes & Noble and Kobo, all these different places, they can't use that Amazon-issued free number to go wide. That's only applicable at Amazon. So what they will end up having to do is they'll have to buy an ISBN number and effectively just republish their book under a new number that is not the number they've been working with all along. And in doing that, their previous reviews, their previous sales rankings, and all the stuff they've accumulated for that book over the time they've been selling it at Amazon goes away. It's not connected to the new ISBN that they have to get in order to sell wide. So that's certainly a problem, and that's something that kind of traps people at Amazon because of that, I always recommend that people buy their own ISBNs, or if you're in a country that gives you ISBNs, I know some places the country will issue ISBNs to authors if you're fortunate enough for that. But in the United States, I always buy mine from Balker, and I suggest that other people do as well, because that gives you more freedom, it gives you more flexibility going forward. And when situations like this arise, if you do want to pull out and if you do want to go wide with your publication, you don't have to do anything special. You can just use the same ISBN that you purchased and republish that book elsewhere. You can uh, you don't even have to republish it. You can just distribute it elsewhere as the same book. So that's a situation that you'll have to look at and think about if you did go with the free option at Amazon. So overall, this is kind of a mess. I do believe that this is going to get rectified. I believe that the right people are going to talk to the right people at Amazon and are going to negotiate this, get it worked out, and I believe that Amazon's policy will change on this. How long will it take? I have no idea. It could be something that turns around quickly, and this video I'm making right now could be obsolete in a week. Or it could be something that takes a matter of months to put into effect. I don't know. I do think it will be fixed eventually, and so I personally am staying the course. I don't know what I would do if I were a romance author because it does affect romance authors more frequently than others, but I'm a fantasy author and I feel pretty okay. I mean, I could be a target as well, but I have not yet. I don't know any fantasy authors who have been hit with this so far. So I'm staying in Kindle Select for now. I'm staying in Kindle Unlimited for now. And I'm hoping that everything is smooth sailing and I'm preparing myself for it to not be just in case I need to prove ownership of my writing or talk to someone at Amazon. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I think we all should be writing to these organizations, sending emails and letters to the Authors Guild, to the Society of Authors if you're in the UK, to whatever the local group is that's a writing guild for you in your local area that can advocate on your behalf to Amazon, write to those people, express your concerns, and ask them to stand up for authors, to stand up for you, and let's get this situation fixed. 
If you have been hit with anything like this from Amazon, or if you know someone who has, drop it in the comments. Let me know. I am interested in hearing about case-by-case -case situations with how this turns out, and let me know what you've done or what your friends have done to rectify it. I'm trying to gather as much data as I can on this, and I'm very interested. And if this video helps you, please like it and drop me a subscription here so you can check out my upcoming videos as soon as they land.